Good morning, everyone. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Brother Stephen, Brother John, Brother Ben, Brother Sam, Sister Angie, Sister Rachel, Sister Gabby, all brothers and sisters in Christ, Brother Trevor and Sue, Sister Sue, sorry, Brother Trevor and Sister Janet, Brother Daniel, Sister Sarah, everyone here today in Christ, including those online, one family I know of, Brother Peter and Sister Tammy, we are all here together to rejoice from last week to today, we are one week closer to our Lord Jesus Christ's return. Each week, we remember him through the bread and the cup of wine. We wait for him patiently. And by doing that, we express our love. It is a great time to rejoice every week. Every time we come before here, it just gives me so much pleasure and happiness, which is the definition of joy. And we all have the right to rejoice if we are in Christ. I'm going to try and pull out some quotes from mostly Isaiah. Focusing on why we are to rejoice by remembering Jesus. And it is mainly because of the promises that God has given us and for the kingdom which he promises us. In Isaiah 59 and 60, you've got the establishment of the kingdom. Please try and don't turn up these quotes. I'm going to be going through them too fast. Isaiah 59 and 60 talking about the establishment of the kingdom talking about the kingdom, how it's going to be set up, everything that God has planned for us brings us joy because we know his word is sure. And this is why we are baptised into Christ, because we believe. And when we look at the things in the kingdom, it brings us great joy as to what is going to happen. Isaiah 35, one of my favourite questions one of my favourite chapters describing the kingdom, where you've got the desert blossoming as a rose. You've got blind men being made to see. You've got deaf people being made to hear. You've got lame people being made to leap. That brings me great joy because I, I just, we are waiting patiently. Not I can't wait, but we are waiting patiently in joy every week for this son of God, Lord Jesus Christ, to return to this earth. And among all those changes being made to the earth, and then Jesus being in the centre, king over all, Isaiah 33, 17, we are told that your eyes will see the king in his beauty. Jesus with unlimited power, given by his father, to save his children, to save everyone in Christ, us, brothers and sisters. And we've got proof of people expressing their emotion in the Bible from the promises God has given to us. Isaiah 38, verses 17 to 38, dealing with Hezekiah. And he says, For peace I had great bitterness, but you have in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. You have cast all my sins behind your back. Every day, if I did not make that life decision, I do not know how I would get through this world. I do not know how I would keep going day by day. Because God assures us that he will throw our sins away. He will cast them behind his back. He constantly reassures us 
in the book of Isaiah, constantly reassures us. He gives us so many reasons to rejoice. And that's an example of Hezekiah showing his emotion, but we can too. We can show our emotion to God because he says to us, Isaiah 43, 25, I will blot out the transgressions. Talking about the book of life where all of our works are recorded. He will blot out those transgressions. What a promise given to all of us. And knowing that God's plan, and we knowing the future, and we knowing that God has set the future, is such a reason to be joyful. And each week we remember this. Each week we come to be joyful. Because we know that there will be a time where this chaos in the world will end. And joy, God's glory, will fill the earth. Isaiah 42 verse 9. Behold, The former things have come to pass, and the new things I have declared before they spring forth. I tell them of you. I tell you of them. Our reason to rejoice, because we have been given promises by God, who knows the future. And we don't know the future. That is why we stick to him. That is why we believe on him. He gives us a greater future than what we are bound to, sin and death. He offers that to all. And he constantly reassures us. Isaiah 45 verse 19. He has declared to the world. He has declared to everyone. I declare the things that are right. Out of this whole world. Where you don't know what's right. What's wrong. Out of all of that, God tells us, I know what's right. He tells us, I declare the things that are right. That's one of my favourite verses. (laughs) But you've got reassurance in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 of the promises that God gives to us of those promises of blotting out our transgressions, of the promises of him setting up this kingdom and ending our eternal suffering throughout the whole world. He tells us, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, For the promises of God in him are yea and amen, yes and yes, absolutely sure that we can trust in his promises. Absolutely. So what can we do in the meantime? What have we been doing? We've been remembering him through the bread and the wine. That is what Jesus has commanded us. Isaiah 64 verse 4. He has told us to patiently wait for him. And in doing so, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, Paul changes the word from that same phrase in Isaiah. It changes the word from waiting to love. In doing this, we are rejoicing Because we are showing love to Jesus. We are showing that we are patiently waiting. That we know he is going to return. And that is so, so powerful. Because it brings me joy and it should bring everyone in Christ joy. Every week. That we can hold those promises in our hearts. That we patiently wait for him in love. And what God truly has in store for us, we can't even imagine. But we can imagine the great joy he will bring when Jesus comes before us. When the word that we have in the Bible, that that promise, that one sole witness is brought to life. And our faith has been made clear to the whole world who has been invited. And for everyone in Christ, our Bible that we read each day is all the more reassurance, especially of the promises. 
that we can be joyful. This is the reason to be joyful, brothers and sisters, because we have God's word in front of us. And for those who are not baptised, you're asking yourselves, how can I be joyful? Because I'm addressing everyone in Christ. Well, I'm telling you, this is an official invitation to be joyful, an invitation for baptism. So you might believe on the promises and you might receive that same joy that everyone in Christ has in their hearts because it is the most amazing feeling, I can tell you. And for our soon-to-be-baptised, Panassa... <laughs> I've forgotten your last name. That is amazing that you have accepted that invitation. And to everyone who hasn't, I can see a lot of you today, and I would personally invite each and every one of you if I had the chance. And everyone watching online, this same invitation, that we may be joyful that we might be baptised into the covenant of God manifested through his Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if there wasn't a quote to help encourage you to be invited, Isaiah 55 verse 3 has got to be one of the most powerful invitations by God to give a person great joy. For it talks about we will receive the sure mercies of David. David being in a position where he had Saul's life, the king of Israel, in his hands. Someone who had tried to kill him, yet he spared his life. Those sure mercies will be given to you. What an invitation! What an invitation! So as all the brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the Bible to us, we have the promises given to us to be joyful, and to all those who are not in Christ yet, I invite you now to be baptised, believe that we may rejoice together in the family of God. Maranatha, um, thank you for your bubbling up anymore. You just about explode. <laughs> so, um, uh, in between, look, uh, it seems only fitting that we have our next song, uh, Joy to the World, um, after which I'll invite our brother John to uh, give us the second half.
Well, good morning, brothers and sisters and young people and boys and girls. It's a joyous day today and the flowers make it even more joyful, don't they, when we see how beautiful they are. My subject is Joy is All Around and it's from the New Testament. Two men looked from prison bars. One saw mud, one saw stars. Joy is like that. It won't come invading your space. It won't come crashing in on you. You have to look for it. You have to find it and embrace it. It is everywhere around, but only if you look. Now Maranatha's talked about the beautiful joy of being um, in Christ, and he's right. But there is other sorts of joy as well. Sorry about that. We don't have a monopoly of, on joy. Some who don't even believe in God experience joy. At times like at a wedding or at the birth of a child, or just generally, or some just when the crows win. Joy is not reserved for the rich. It's not reserved for the famous. You need only to look at the website for Agape in Action and see the beautiful children from Kenya and their smiles to know that joy is not restricted to wealth or fame. Let's go down a little side road for a minute. There wouldn't be anyone here today except probably Jordan and Rachel's baby Ziva and a few just a little older than her who have not been impacted by the coronavirus. Even Craig and Ali's dog was a bit concerned when they were all home for a while. Not unhappy, but something was different. Our own little frustrations, living in a state almost free of the virus, doesn't even come close to the scale of suffering and death around the world. But this morning, we have to ask ourselves the serious question. Have I chosen joy lately? And equally important, have I spread joy around to others? Or have I been a bit grumpy, complaining about every little thing that has changed my nearly perfect life? Righto, own up. I have been a smidge grumpy. Have you? All quiet. Today is Father's Day, a day when we would like to give our fathers joy, and so we should. We have a heavenly Father who is so great, the creator of the universe. Sometimes I think we find it hard to feel close because of his greatness. But he is our heavenly Father, our Abba, our Daddy. In Psalm 103 we read, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. To fear him is not to be afraid of him, but I think to be afraid to disappoint him. I was never afraid of my earthly father, but I never wanted to disappoint him. Our wonderful, caring, heavenly father has emotions like we do. Look at these two examples. Just before the flood, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. On the other hand, in Luke 15, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So let's make sure that today we give joy to our Heavenly Father in our worship here now, in our remembrance of Jesus' death, in our remembrance of Jesus' joyous resurrection and in our interaction with each other here this morning. Let's be filled with joy and thankfulness when we look forward to Jesus coming, knowing that we are saved. Hear what Paul said in Ephesians. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And a little later on, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Let's also remember the two great commandments, to love our Heavenly Father and each other. Surely we will find joy today and in all our tomorrows. I'd like to now look at a few examples in the New Testament of joy. There was great joy at Jesus' birth as that beautiful song we've just sung, Joy to the World. In Luke, an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy to all the people. Listen to what Jesus said about being joyful when you might least expect it. In Luke 6, blessed are you when people hate you when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. And the next quote tells us how joyful Jesus is when we keep his commands and that joy flows straight to us. John chapter 15, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. It's a command. It's not an option. There was also great joy at Jesus' resurrection. The two women went to the tomb and were told, go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. And here's a quote that immediately I thought of speaking on this subject came to my mind. It's joy despite knowing of Jesus' coming suffering. In Hebrews chapter 12, you might like to turn to it, it's a very beautiful passage. Hebrews chapter 12. It's a good quote to ponder this morning as we take the bread and wine in memory of him. From verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Now that's our job. But listen to the next bit. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What a beautiful quote. There was much joy when Jesus ascended to heaven. 
While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Paul the Apostle says in Romans, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We'll now have a look at Philippians. Philippians is a book of joy. If you could turn first of all to chapter 1, verse 1. Joy occurs in Philippians 16 times. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Chapter 2 at verse 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. In chapter 4, our reading this morning, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. Chapter 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. In James is a strange one. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Is that how you react to times of trials? Dear brother, dear sister, do I? You know, the opposite of joy is sadness and despair. If our talks this morning about joy, dear brother or dear sister or dear young person, have made you sad because you are not joyful, please don't despair. Please don't give up. Keep praying for help. Keep reading these beautiful quotes. Keep asking for God to work in your life through his spirit. We talk a lot about the fruit of the spirit and sometimes I wonder if we think it's just the result of our own efforts. But that's not what the passage says. It's about God's spirit working in us and the second quality is joy the fruit of the spirit is love joy etc and here are some other examples of god's spirit in our lives romans chapter 15 at verse 13 may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? In Ephesians 3 at verse 16 I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. You know, sometimes we hear about the English people stiff, out, stiff upper lip. 
Uh, our daughter was in England once travelling on a local train to the city and the person with her said, look, if you talk to me, I won't reply. Stiff upper lip. Well, I think sometimes at Halifax Street, we have a stiff upper lip. We almost take it to the next level. Over the years, I've read this quote several times and the result has been absolutely deadpan, as if someone is asking you what you want for lunch. I'm going to read it now again and I hope that some of you might even say out loud, wow, or a nod or a smile and show some joy. It's a beautiful quote. Here we go. It's from 1st of John chapter 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are the children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Isn't it beautiful? And I'm going to finish with this beautiful quote from Jude. It talks about great joy and without fault. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.